Chapter 491 I Can't Take It Anymore Late at night, Bundai and Lu Xu sat together, facing each other. Lu Xu was silent, while Bundai was stating the latest information. She had realized the sudden increase in her access to intelligence ever since Lu Xu's arrival. More precisely speaking, though, it was through Lu Xu's access. It felt like a giant, covert web had just set into operation in Japan, serving Lu Xu alone. Bundai was in shock. She knew how great the cost must be to plant a web here. What was even scarier was the fact that the entire system was meant for only one person. The number of intelligence agents used was not even as many when Heavenly King Ye himself came last time. Moreover, the open accessibility could not be done without Nye Ting's authorization. But why did Heavenly King Nye think so highly of this young man? The collection of gods has come to a conclusion regarding Nojoa Hakushun's death. They deduced that the heavenly network is behind it and seem to believe that an Earth-type class B metahuman from the network is somewhere in Nishinokyo. They call him the suspected ninth heavenly king, then, Bundai looked at Lu Xu, awaiting his reply. Lu Xu drew a startled breath. He did not expect the story to unfold this way. Um, why did they think so? Lu Xu asked in curiosity. They believe that an Earth-type Class B metahuman joined forces with Heavenly King Lee and Pattaya to kill Johnson. It has also been verified by a few individual practitioners that this metahuman has deep sea white sand in his possession, which is in line with the fact that Anthony lost his deep sea white sand in the Salt Lake remains. In any case, deep sea white sand has only appeared in Japan before, Bundai explained. Lu Xu took a while to gather his thoughts. Though unexpected, he had to admit that their analysis was rather reasonable. Um, please continue. Currently the collection of gods has activated the top alert operation procedures due to the incident. In any case, they are deeply scared by Heavenly King Nye's action the previous time. Although he did not cause any actual damage on the collection of gods, it has dealt a deadly blow to their morale seeing how Heavenly King Ya could come, kill and leave as he pleased. Lu Xu was glad to hear that. When they wanted to do the same, Nye Ting had ascended to Class A, by then, those who wanted to cause trouble in our country might not have even left in one piece. In fact, it would have been a different story if Nye Ting had remained at Class B, with Chen Bailey far away guarding the national border, the collection of gods could easily come and leave when their job was done. It was unrealistic for people of the same class to hunt one another down relentlessly. It seemed to be a despicable move. Nye Ting ran away after giving their enemy a hard slap. But when the enemy wanted to enact revenge in a similar way, they realized they could hardly even make the slap, let alone escape. His ascension happened at just the right time, Lu Xu exclaimed. Thus, Nye Ting's overemphasis on the collection of gods could probably be due to his concern over the emergence of a class A there. Lu Xu asked, is there any sign of a newly ascended class A in the collection of gods? No. But according to the information released long ago, the higher-ups are researching on a ceremony and symbols related to sacrifice. But they have yet to achieve satisfactory results, Bundai replied. Her words reminded Lu Xu of the scene below the cavern in the Beimang remains. Could that be their so-called sacrifice? Were they trying to artificially create a Class A through distorted methods like that? Now, Nojoa Takenabu, one of the top three Class B experts of the Jingoists was dead. Coupled with the recent power awakening like that of the saint and pressure from the heavenly network, the collection of God's worries were completely justifiable. Wait a moment. Lu Xu was confused. Is that Kitamura Hirono free from suspicion? Despite his unprofessional approach and mediocre scheming, it should at least result in some confusion, shouldn't it? After the conclusion had been reached, the discussion over Kitamura Hirono has subsided. It's mainly because Kitamura's teacher is one of the class B pros of the collection of gods. Certainly there are voices suspecting that it was all by Kitamura's hand, but such views cannot be raised openly, Bandai explained. Lu Xu was disappointed. He had inadvertently planted blame on others in the past, 
but now he put in effort and he had failed. What the heck? There was a long silence. Then, Lu Xu said, No. I can't take it anymore. I deserve better. From Bundai's distress, plus 166. Bundai started to wonder Heavenly King Ye's purpose of sending Lu Xu there. Was it to give him the freedom to do whatever he wanted? Get ready the intelligence for me. I need to make some preparations, Lu Xu said in a firm voice. Before the dawn of the day, Sakurai was awoken by sharp sounds of air. She put on the clothes prepared by Bun Dai. Indeed, it was a bit tight at her bust area. It was only 3 a.m. in the morning. With an overcoat draped over her shoulders, Sakurai pulled open the door to see Lu Xu practicing his sword play in the yard. Does he train this early every day? She wondered to herself, I'm not even half as diligent as him. What she did not know was that Lu Xu had been singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Stars for hours before his sword practice. Without stopping his training, Lu Xu smiled at her and asked, Up so early? Yeah. Sakurai sat on the edge of the corridor and watched Lu Xu train, her hands supporting her head. Lu Xu felt something different about Sakurai, as if she was, more at ease. As a secret practitioner who acted with purposes and missions, Sakurai Yeko had to put on a disguise anytime, anywhere. Yet, just the night before, she seemed to have let go something in her heart. It was not because of Kudamura's words, nor anybody, but a sudden venting of her pent-up dissatisfaction of her present situation. Then, her wall of pretense was breached, like a collapsed dam. Having infiltrated through the cracks of the dam, water gushed out and, eventually, flooded everything. Kiri Harikin, Sakurai called his name, smiling. Lu Xu paused his movement. Yeah. Will you remember me? Probably. You are so pretty. Thank you. For the first time Sakurai Yeko sensed honesty and simplicity in a praise regarding her attractiveness. But Lu Xu felt that it was Sakurai's goodbye message. Chapter 492 Lu Xu's Class B Ambitions During the day, Lu Xu appeared to be an attentive student in class, while actually he was thinking about the execution of his plan at night. But when he happened to catch a glimpse of Sakurai, he realized she seemed to be in deep thought. Lu Xu was curious, because she had never looked so worried before. Lu Xu asked, are you thinking about your keys and wallet? Hesitant, she replied, not at all, sensei. Are you concerned about me? Err. Lu Xu was at a loss over what to say. Then, he chose to give up and continue sleeping instead. A smile suddenly appeared on Yeko's face. Maybe Kiri Harikin was not as complicated as expected, she thought, my teacher could have overread things. The speculation grew stronger in Lu Xu's heart that something might have happened to Sakurai. Please don't affect your teaching at this weekend's martial art lessons. At the moment, however, there was no time to care that much. Lu Xu had understood that the best thing this Japan trip had to offer was neither the inheritance nor the mission, but distress points that could be taken freely from the collection of gods. He was in the final stage of igniting the entire third nebula with only two stars left. Lu Xu was also curious about the appearance and function of the third dagger, and how he would be after his eventual ascension to Class B. And he believed the last bits of distress points could be gained from the collection of gods. At night, Lu Xu waited until 10 p.m. before leaving his house, while Bun Dai went out quietly from the back door at the same time. He had specifically told her not to come back until his safe return, so that she would not be brought into trouble should anything bad happen on Lu Xu's side. There were inherent uncertainties in his plan. Thus, Lu Xu hoped to minimize the risk for others. As a result, he did not even use the most crucial information provided by the intelligence network, so as not to leave behind any suspicious traces pointing to anyone else. In other words, Lu Xu was not a cold-blooded person and he could not bring himself to think that other people's lives could be sacrificed for him. Besides, with no intention to pursue any noble cause, he would suffer from a guilty conscience should innocent people be landed in trouble. 
In silence, Lu Xu leaped over the wall and blended into the darkness. Standing high on the rooftop of a building, he gazed at the collection of God's headquarters in the distance. Some lights were still on in the mansion. Lu Xu wondered, as a practitioner organization, what they were doing so late at night. On second thoughts, it was understandable though. Pure cultivation alone would be sufficient to guarantee one's survival in the mountains, but not in this dirty world. Here, information from across the world had to be collected instantly, regional strategies had to be planned out, and... Speaking of which, was it alright for the Heavenly Network to have their Heavenly King Ye Ting running around killing people every day? Didn't he have administrative stuff to do? Ever since Lu Xu found out that the inheritance was nothing but a scam, he had been complaining about Nye Ting daily. At 12 a.m., most lights in the mansion had been turned off. Lu Xu jumped down from the top of the building and walked towards the mansion in a casual manner. He was not scared, because most of the pro guys had gone home for cultivation at this hour. The mansion solely served work purposes and was definitely not a place for residents. This was because there was not enough spirit chi accumulated in the mansion, the same logic as that in school. Thus, the function of the mansion was more of as a symbol rather than practicality. Otherwise, Lu Xu would not have chosen here anyway. Outside the mansion entrance stood twelve security guards, each with powerful energy waves. In one glance, Lu Xu was certain that all of them were of class D and above. They stood in silence with a stern look and a long sword hanging under their waist. But one of them caught Lu Xu's attention. A class C. Upon Lu Xu's approach, one of them saluted him. Minister Kitamura. All twelve of them made a bow. Lu Xu grinned. Very well. In the next instant, however, all of them aimed their long swords at Lu Xu. Their action was so in sync that they seemed to have specifically practiced that for many times. Okay, fine. I'll never succeed when I purposely want to plant it on others. Bloody hell, Lu Xu sighed in distress. Honestly speaking, he had not come with high expectations either, as he could be easily exposed through his attire, schedule and behavior. Moreover, Kitamura Hirono had his private driver for transport. Thus, Kitamura's mask was more useful in concealing Lu Xu's true face. Although he could have used anybody else's face, Lu Xu still had a glint of hope in his heart. All of a sudden, the situation descended into chaos. In a split second, blades clanged out of their sheaths all at once. Yet, they chose the wrong enemy. At lightning speed, Lu Xu's figure retreated out of the encirclement and dashed forward again. At that instant, Two katanas thrust towards him simultaneously, but Lu Xu caught the blades effortlessly between his fingers. Before the security guards could react, they were immediately hurled outwards as Lu Xu exerted force on the blades. Without any hesitation, Lu Xu cast out the two katanas backhandedly, pinning two security guards on the walls before they were even able to dodge the attack. At that moment, the sword hilts had yet to stop shaking. Now, the other security guards understood that they were no match for this stranger. One of them slid a black, khaki-looking item into his palm. But Lu Xu had arrived before he could press the button. Then, the man could only stare as his chest caved in under Lu Xu's fist. In the next second, his blood gushed out uncontrollably, and he had not managed to press the button. The remaining few were red-eyed due to bloodlust. They darted towards Lu Xu without any consideration of their chances of winning. After a soft sigh, Lu Xu finished up all of them neatly and quickly. Now he had another twelve magical weapons in his pocket. He decided to leave, for stronger opponents like Collection of God's Class B experts would surely be attracted to the site by his blatant killing. In Bundai's calculation earlier, it would take at most five minutes for one of the class Bs to reach the mansion from his cultivation residence. But Lu Xu was not done yet. Casually he took out a bucket of red paint and a brush from his seal of lands. He had bought them in the afternoon just to earn distress points. In the control room, as the crew were busy calling the collection of God's superiors, 
They watched in shock as Lu Xu painted on their doors and left immediately. Chapter 493, Brave Man Translator, Atlas Studios Editor, Atlas Studios Numerous practitioners swarmed towards the mansion in less than two minutes after Lu Xu had left. Actually, he had taken advantage of them. The previous time, even Yeting himself did not visit the collection of God's mansion, because everyone knew that it was merely a meaningless shell. Even so, a Class C had been stationed in their security forces. This was extremely rare. At a time when there were fewer than 10 Class A's and Class B's could also be considered as the cream of practitioners. After all, how many Class C's would be content with the job of a security guard? In any case, they could not possibly hire a Class B for this position. Besides, it was almost impossible that any Class B's would make trouble there, even knowing that there was nothing to gain. All important information was safely kept in Class B superiors' houses. So which class B would be so free and bored to target the mansion? However, Lu Xu was. And the key thing was, he had a lot to gain from it, distress points, which remained a secret to the rest of the world. Those people were already seething with rage at the sight of the corpses. Their men were slain right in front of their headquarter. How shameful! Silently a class B superior stood in front of the entrance. His face was expressionless despite the fury inside. From Takashima Tairatsu's distress, plus 499. From. From. A man reported, Sir, there is no trace left by the enemy. Our Earth-type metahumans have chased from underground, but they have yet to notice any signs of his escape through Earth. Eleven Class Ds and one Class C were killed barehandedly in such a short period of time. Takashima sighed in grief. And he did not even use his flying dagger. No doubt, it's him, the ninth heavenly king. He is probably furious about the Daoyuan students being wanted. The revenge from the heavenly network was within their expectation, but not its efficiency. Just two days ago, the news had come from the Darkness Kingdom regarding the verification of Lu Xu's death and the claiming of Deep Sea White Sand by a killer codenamed Yu. Our situation is not very hopeful. Earth-type metahumans have always been an effective assassination tool via infiltration. And now, the Heavenly Network has actually produced a Class B of them. Back in the early ages, after Spirit Chi regeneration, the potential and capabilities of Earth-type had been underrated. It was not until Anthony, who traversed thousands of miles just to kill Chen Bailey, did the world finally see their incredible strengths in infiltration. As compared to the unparalleled mobility of the Earth type, the Fire type were the most competent direct attackers. Close all exits of the city and investigate every suspect one by one. He can't possibly hide underground all the time, Takashima commanded. At this moment, someone asked, Look. What's that on the glass door? Earlier, their attention was drawn to the bodies, which caused them to ignore the door. Upon inspection, they saw a giant circle in red with an English word remove written inside. What does it mean? Building removal. What? That word means this building is to be removed. A person with general knowledge of China quickly made an explanation that it was a symbol for house dismantling in China. Buildings painted with that were to be pulled down in a certain period of time. Thus, the heavenly network must be behind it. Everyone was shocked. Who the heck was that? So brave. Besides, why the need to defame other English-speaking organizations with something so characteristic of your country? From Takashima Tairatsu's distress, plus 999. From. From. They were aghast at Lu Xu's logic. Probably no one from other countries would paint such graffiti. What kind of genius was so talented in disgusting people like this? And what was he up to? Soon, information regarding the incident spread out, even to those not present at the scene. As a result, Lu Xu's sixth star went from half-filled to almost complete overnight. 
Its full ignition was well within his reach with a little more contributions from the collection of gods afterwards. And he believed it would not be tough. I am such a genius. Lu Xu thought to himself. It was said that the most difficult part about high wire walking lay in the last three steps before the acrobat reached the platform. It was because the less mature minds might let up towards the end of the performance, leading to fatal mistakes. And to Lu Xu, the last thing on his list was to finish the last three steps cautiously and safely. Meanwhile, as all superiors were called to the mansion, Lu Xu had to seize this opportunity to paint a building removal symbol on every collection of God's Ace's homes. With neither inheritance nor any treasures obtainable, Lu Xu's only aim this time was his cultivation power. Therefore, he had to rely on fellow collection of God's members for his promotion to Class B. When he reached Kitamura's doorstep, a dagger suddenly shot towards him from the shadow ahead. Lu Xu was surprised by its impressive speed. Retreating to the side at the top of his speed, Lu Xu narrowly escaped this murderous attack. Before he could recover from his shock, he saw the attacker slowly pacing out of the shadow. She was stunning, and sakuras were blossoming on her kimono. Wait. Isn't that Sakurai Yeko? Yeko's voice was as cold as the winter snow. Kitamura Hirono, today will be the last day you live. Turns out this was the reason you were so emotional? That you came to kill me today. Hey. Sis, I'm not the one you are looking for. Lu Xu was at a loss over what to do, because it would be unwise to change back to his own face right in front of Yeko. Despite the inconsistency in his supposed persona, he could not risk revealing his true identity. Lu Xu was cursing silently inside. Now, he had to take the blame for Kitamura Hirono. It was all karma. And the issue was, he could not explain himself clearly at the moment. Sakurai. Please. Chapter 494, What is Happening? That night, Kitamura brought a bunch of people to Sakurai's house, only to realize that there was indeed no one at home. Yeko was determined to take Kitamura's life, though she was not sure whether it was due to his insulting comments or his threat to kill Kirihara. But it did not seem to matter anymore. Instead of making an ambush near her apartment, she chose the street in front of Kitamura's house. And then, she happened to meet Lu Xu. At this moment, Yeko's sleeves and trouser legs suddenly gathered together, and her loose kimono instantly transformed into a set of professional training attire. Her Sakura kimono was actually a piece of changeable magical weapon. In a split second, the smell of murder permeated the magnificent night view. Yeko's dagger was a synergistic match to her new outfit, endowing her with an air of danger. Lu Xu racked his brains but was unable to think of a solution. Moreover, he was unwilling to kill her, after knowing her kind nature over the past few days. And most importantly, it was all a mistake. At that instant, the Sakura petals on her kimono had actually fallen to the ground, leaving behind a patch of blackness as dark as the abyss. It was elegant and murderous at the same time. With no prior warnings, the petals suddenly sprang towards Lu Xu like dozens of blades, swirling into a pink flood. Not only a magical weapon, her kimono was a deadly one. Wait. Lu Xu screamed, wait a second. Shocked, Yeko's movement paused for a brief second, wondering what Kitamura was up to. He seemed different from the man in the information given. Shouldn't Kitamura Hirono be a serious fighter during any combats? But she had no intention to stop. Her determination could never be swayed by a few verbal distractions. As a result, despite being chased by a wave of Sakura petals, Lu Xu carried the bucket of red paint and wrote a Chinese character, one enclosed by a big circle. This time, he had no time to slander others and wrote it in Chinese instead. This made Yeko even more confused. What's going on? Why did you draw that on your own door while I am about to kill you? Is it another magical symbol created by the jingoists? But what does it mean? In Japanese, the kanji had a different meaning from its Chinese counterpart. 
Suddenly, a thought struck Yako, and she was immediately on full alert. What if the symbol could release some deadly forces? Yet, in the next instant, Lu Xu threw away his bucket and took to his heels. It seemed that he had no interest in the battle at all. From Sakurai Yako's distress, plus 199. What? So what did you just draw? Yako gazed at Lu Xu's receding figure in bewilderment. Sakura petals had returned to her kimono as the target ran out of their effective range. However, she still found Kitamura's reaction inexplicable. Wasn't he supposed to be a lunatic killer under the disguise of a gentle countenance? Why did that fellow run away? Kitamura Hirono. Stop. A murderous look crept onto Yeiko's face, her thin eyebrows as sharp as lancets. Before Kitamura went to Yeiko's apartment that night, he had conducted a complete investigation on Sakurai Yeiko's background, which was available on the market, of course. Despite her clean-looking profile, Kitamura was experienced enough to notice the flaws therein. For example, there were no records on the accident that took away her parents' lives. Furthermore, without any source of income or caregivers, how did Sakurai survive and lead such a decent life in her school years? There were too many questionable points that could support Kitamura's speculation. But actually, his aim was simple. He wanted Sakurai Yeiko, and to use her to wipe out the remaining conservative forces. That would play a significant part in his future path in the organization. But it was completely unexpected that he would be fooled by her. Before he could quell his anger, the news had come that someone disguised as him and went on a killing spree in front of the mansion. Yet, Kitamura did not have to worry this time, for there were enough witnesses around him to prove his innocence. Furthermore, the symbol that the attacker left behind was very representative. Now, it had been confirmed that the culprit was from the Heavenly Network. There were no two ways about it. Thus, any voices that were unfavorable to Kitamura would soon subside. Kitamura felt relieved for the cracking of the case. The man had really not put in much thought into the slander. Currently, the war machine, the collection of gods, was in full operation. Every Earth-type metahuman was sent underground in search of any potential traces left by the intruder, while all vital traffic lines on the surface had been closed for a citywide investigation. Having settled his duties, Kitamura decided to return home for some rest. There was a clear hierarchy in the collection of gods, and he knew his only obligation in this case was to answer promptly to his superior's calls when necessary. More importantly, his teacher had warned him that he was no match for their Class B opponent. After all, the man had killed the Class C security guard in the blink of an eye. Since his teacher was the current leader of the Collection of Gods, there was no need for Kitamura to take the risk. But, to show his concern and sincerity, Kitamura dispatched all his men for various purposes. On his way home, just when he had parked his car and was about to cover the last distance on foot, he heard Sakurai's shouting, Kitamura Hirono. Stop. Kitamura glanced around, but Sakurai was nowhere to be found. Then, Sakurai dashed across the crossroads. Her slender body looked attractive in her adjusted kimono, but apparently she was surrounded by a murderous air. However, it seemed that she had not even seen him. From Kitamura Hirono's distress, plus 666. What's happening? Kitamura felt his head spinning in confusion. Chapter 495, Misunderstandings once Lu Xu was out of Yeko's vision, he started to accelerate to the top of his speed. With his remarkable speed comparable to that of Class B's, it was impossible for Yeko, a mere Class C, to catch up with him. Yeko was slightly resigned. Nothing in her information said that Hirono possessed such speed. It was at this moment that she suddenly heard a shout behind her. Ms. Sakurai, are you looking for me? Yeko abruptly looked back. To her consternation, she realized that Hirono had ran behind her and was walking over from a crossroad. At this very instant, Hirono and Yeko saw in each other's eyes a tinge of uncertainty. Yeko thought silently. How did this idiot run behind me? 
It couldn't be that his speed has progressed to such an extent? Hirono wondered to himself. Wasn't it her who ferociously allowed herself to stand still? Why does she look like she shouldn't be here instead? Lu Xu had already escaped far away, lest he be tracked down by them. He had ran off, leaving Yeko and Kitamura at a loss. From Sakurai Yeko's distress, plus 666. From Kitamura Hirono's distress, plus 666. The misunderstanding was because of Lu Xu, so the distress points were all Lu Xu's fault. Hirono chuckled. Ms. Sakurai, you are really using me to find joy, huh? When I tried to find you last night, there certainly wasn't anyone at home. So why have you come to my house on your own initiative today? Yeko coldly stared at Hirono. She said, after tonight, there will be no more Kitamura Hirono from the collection of gods on this earth. Oh. Hirono adjusted his non-prescription glasses. Just because you were taught by that Oda Takuma. I'm afraid that you still can't kill me. I doubt he himself would be able to do so. Yeko was uncertain where his courage came from. Was he really saying that even a class B could not kill him? However, she had no intention of talking nonsense. As soon as Hirono finished speaking, she prepared to strike. Yet at that moment, a long sword fell from an electric pole. Oda Takuma's figure suddenly appeared, the sword ready to split Kitamura into halves. Yeko was dumbfounded. Why would her teacher be hiding there? It was as if he was planning to murder the presumptuous Hirono. But at that split second, an invisible figure pushed Kitamura from behind him. It took the opportunity to draw his sword from his waist. The massive momentum pushed Oda Takuma, who was leaping from the sky, in an instant. An enormous blast billowed outwards with a gingling sound. The surrounding houses had starting shaking under the force of the two swords clashing. This was a battle between two powerful class Bs. Oda Takuma's stable figure once again returned to the electric pole. He looked downwards and laughed bitterly. Kitamura Kijitori, you still have a lot up your sleeves. The middle-aged man called Kitamura Kijitori slowly sheathed his sword. He chuckled, I spent so much effort in trying to find you, you gray rat. After today, you no longer have to continue hiding. You might as well stay behind. At this very moment, the situation became unpredictable. Oda Takuma personally came to observe, as he had felt the change in Yeko and was worried that she would yield. On the other hand, the reason why Hirono dared to talk wildly then was to incite his teacher. His teacher realized that out of the four present, his energy was most in line with that of Oda Takuma's. He had only planned to ask and enrage, but never had he expected that he would actually lure out Oda Takuma. Kejitori laughed. You really have a long way to go if you want to catch up with Kurihara Kuraki. If he were here, needless to say my words would not anger him at all. In terms of strength, I'm afraid you would have to give way and join hands with others before you stand a chance. No wonder those families in hiding no longer trust you. If it were me, it would also be hard for me to trust your leadership. What future is there for the conservatives? But, beside me is a mouse who makes people disturbed. The natural instinct is to simply get rid of you. When Oda Takuma heard that he was described as a mouse by Kijitori, his veins seemed ready to burst. How could the self-proclaimed genius bear such humiliation? Yet at the very next instant, Kijitori unsheathed his sword from his waist and pointed it at Yeko. Without even waiting for Oda Takuma to react, Kijitori had already approached Yeko. One slice and the night was broken. The sakura flowers on Yeko's kimono each resisted the force of the blade, before leaving remains of dust on the blade. There was a ring as the blade and the kimono clashed. Yeko was sent flying by the force of the blade, yet her kimono was still intact. Kijitori gasped in admiration and laughed. It was that mythical object. So it's been in the hands of you, the conservatives. Yet as he once again prepared for the chase to kill her, Oda Takuma suddenly fled far away. 
he did not even care whether his student would come out alive or dead, as to him, he was not yet worthy of being Kijitori's opponent. Kijitori said with a sense of pity, what a coward. Hirono, I'll leave this to you. Just as he finished speaking, Kijitori quickly withdrew and chased after Oda Takuma. Yeko coughed up fresh blood and once again stood up. She looked towards the direction her teacher had fled towards, seemingly heaving a sigh. Some questions and answers she did not want to know about had always troubled her, and now everything was proven. Not to mention her Sakura kimono was indeed magical. There was no trace of damage even after resisting a first-class attack from a Class B, although she had received rather severe internal injuries, she still had the energy to move around. Yeko suddenly turned around and fled. She headed towards the dojo. She knew that if she had not received any support, there was no doubt that she would be dead. After all, Hirono may not be much weaker than her when she was at full power. On top of that, Yeko suddenly wanted to know, if her teacher had abandoned her, then, would that young man help her? This world was still really cold, huh? Yeko silently heaved a sigh. For some reason, Yeko felt that the young man in the dojo would definitely help her, although they had not known each other for long. As the two vied with each other towards the dojo, Hirono laughed behind Yeko. Why are you escaping in that direction? Do you really think he will save you, you spy? How will he see you when he knows about your identity? Do you think you can stay by his side? His words stabbed hard into Yeko's heart. She was very clear that what Hirono said was right. From the very beginning her intention to interact with Lu Shu was wrong. How could there be a right conclusion? If Kirihara knew that she had approached him as his spy, how could she justify herself? But Yeko did not care so much now. She was like a drowned traveler, only wishing to grab a stalk of straw in this long river of time as proof that at least in her seventeen years of living, she had encountered a single act of sincerity. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty Then we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens To tell us things that we better